Habakkuk cries out to the Lord, Why? How long, Lord? Can you not see what we're going through? Why won't you do something? Timothy, he has his own issues to deal with in life. The ups and downs, the sideways of the circumstances he finds himself in. And he is feeling the same emotions that we feel in our day today. The disciples, they're having relationship difficulties. Jesus is encouraging them to both offer and to give and receive forgiveness. Ups and downs, disappointments, setbacks, trials, disabilities, disappointments. Why? Why, Lord, is all this happening? And don't you see it, Lord Jesus? Do something. And he says, I have done something. I've given you an incredible gift, the gift of faith, and it only takes a spark. So St. Paul is writing to his spiritual son, Timothy, and he's encouraging him to rekindle the gift of faith that he has received. Other translations say to stir up or to fan into a flame or to keep alive. Has our faith diminished? Is the fire, the enthusiasm we have for the gospel, is it gone out? Is it going out in our life? And today the Lord is offering us an incredible opportunity to open our hearts to him and to receive more of his Holy Spirit power. Will I today open my heart? Will I accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior of my life? Will I put him at the center of my life? Will I say, Holy Spirit, here I am. Breathe your life into me. I need more of your life. I want to be enkindled, that is stirred up, brought back uh, to a flame by your grace uh, today. It's an incredible offer that the Lord has for us. And what do we need for a fire? Well, we need dry wood, which is us, and we need a spark, and we need oxygen. Therein is the role of the Holy Spirit, his uh, gift to us. And it does only take a spark. And I'm reminded of the little song, Pass It On, that we sang when I was on a core retreat back in high school. Core, I think it stands for Christians on a Retreat. It's akin to a Curcio weekend for teenagers. And this is in the Diocese of Alexandria, Cornwall. And the theme song, Pass It On. Maybe you remember this. I'll, I'll give it a little, little college try here. It only takes a spark to get a fire going and soon all those around can warm up in its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once we've experienced it, we spread the love to everyone. We want to pass it on. <laughs> Not too bad, eh? Not too bad from a guy who at choir practice when I was in seminary. The director said to me, Alan, just move your lips. <laughs> that come a, it come a long way, right? The, the seed of faith was there. And by God's grace, it just continued uh, to grow. So there's this spark that the Lord is offering us that can catch us. Uh, back into a flame and you know when I was considering this I thought well there's also like the negative dimension of a spark but we need to focus on the, the positive dimension of the spark the negative part of the spark is where we become like Habakkuk in our first reading today and having been a priest now for over 28 years I can testify that I've never baptized somebody Habakkuk is not a very popular a popular name, but nonetheless, he was an important prophet in the Old Testament, and we don't want to just look overlook him because of his, his name. And so, basically, he's questioning God. Why, God? Why is this happening? Why don't you do something, God? And I came across a meditation based on Habakkuk called Questioning God, and this is in... Uh, a translation of scripture that I have here. It's, it's a recovery Bible. It's the New International Version, and it has all the points, applications of the 12 steps in scripture, along with some very reflective uh, meditations. And the one for today is called Questioning God. So 
put it, put it in the context of Habakkuk and his questioning of God and how we can question God. Where were you, God? Where were you when I needed you? Didn't you see the violence, the abuse, the injustice? Didn't you care? There are times in life when we are full of questions about God. The pain of past trauma can be intensified when we begin to struggle with these hard questions. It is important to acknowledge that these questions are not merely academic. No theoretical explanation of the problem of pain will soothe our raging, confused hearts. These are urgent, personal questions about God and about his involvement in our lives. We want to know that he sees and cares and intervenes. He and we need him. We need his love. We need his help. It is important to know that we are not the first to ask these hard questions. There is clear biblical precedent for questioning God. People of faith have always struggled with issues such as these. We can take comfort and courage from knowing that God's prophets asked urgent questions similar to our own. So do not be ashamed or embarrassed or think, why, what's wrong with me if I'm questioning God? But question God. He's big enough. He can handle it. We come before him. And there are all kinds of sparks flying around the world today, causing all kinds of different fires, economic fires, political fires, social fires. And I, I've said this in one of my previous episodes. I think that as a culture or as a world, a society, we're, we're, on, the, we're on the edge here. We're, we're going to tip one way or the other. The question is, which way are we going to tip? We want to tip towards God. But I can sense so much fear and worry and anxiety and just this tension in our culture today. And we want to, if we are experiencing that, and I'll be honest, I find myself experiencing it. I want to invite Jesus into that. Don't be afraid to question God. The prophets did it. He can handle it. But then we listen to his gentle voice and the responses that he has for us. Why, Lord? Habakkuk asked that question. Why, Lord? Why is there violence? Where, why are there wrongs? Why is there trouble? Why is there corruption in the world? And we let Jesus speak to him. We want to be ourselves reminded by the Lord's grace. I need coffee. Hold on for a second. <laughs> Hold that thought. Okay, there we go. We remember that God is with us in all circumstances, at all times. The Lord promised us, I would never abandon you. It never, never says anywhere in this book, come follow me, it's going to be easy. It does say in this book that I am with you always. I will never abandon you. I will not forget you. That the Lord is at work. He is sparking us to a deeper faith, which is the positive dimension of, of the gospel. In fact, all the scripture readings for today, the positive dimension is that this spark of faith moves us to a deeper reliance upon the power of God. I am powerless. I do not have the power. God has the power. May you find him now. 12-step recovery says, may you find him now. Tap into the one who has all power. That one is God. And he allows himself to be found. So the, the context of the second reading today, Paul's second letter to Timothy, his spiritual son, is that it takes place just before Paul's execution. And he is writing this second letter now to Timothy to encourage him through turbulent times, reminding him and reminding us that in actual fact, turbulence is a good thing. Turbulence affords us the opportunity to grow in strength, in our faith, in our confidence in the Lord. And turning to my recovery Bible, I again came across a very interesting reflection when taken in the context of 2 Timothy, our second reading here today. It's called The Need for Turbulence. On an airplane, 
a line of small blades is placed halfway down the upper wing. These little blades that we may recall seeing on the airplane when we're flying, these little blades that stick up from the otherwise smooth wings are called vortex generators. Write that down. <laughs> vortex. Who knew? Vortex generators. They are put on the plane for the purpose of creating turbulence in the airflow that passes over the wing. The plane designers had discovered that the plane would not steer accurately when the air current was too smooth. For whatever reason, life does not steer accurately when everything is too smooth either. We seem to need a little roughness and turbulence to make progress. Many persons experience their worst relapse and slip when everything is going smoothly. If we don't remember or encounter rough seas or difficulties, we get talky and complacent and can easily get off course and crash. Without struggle and strain, we become easy and vulnerable prey to stupid errors. Aha, uh -huh, I can identify with that. We need to stay alert, Paul said. This is Romans chapter 5, verse 3. We rejoice in our sufferings. Why? Because our problems and rough times produce endurance and toughness that sees reality as a struggle, not an easy, smooth highway. So endurance, as on the plane, the airflow on the wing of a plane and their vortex generators, we need turbulence in our life that awakens us up, sparkens us up to a more profound faith and encounter with the Lord. Turbulence moves us to rely, as St. Paul encourages Timothy, to rely on the power of God. And the context of the gospel is that the disciples were encouraged by Jesus to forgive. Forgive, 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 forgive. A brother comes to you seven times a day, you, you forgive him seven times a day. And that's why the disciples start, at least the excerpt we have for today's gospel, Lord, increase our faith. I can't do that on my own. I cannot do that. Lord, increase my faith. That is the cry that we can express to the Lord from our heart in, fa in the face of the seeming impossibilities of life. Increase our faith. And the faith starts, as I sang so melodiously, <laughs> as a spark. <laughs> and we want to pass that on. And it grows. But even in its smallest essence, the size of a mustard seed, Faith can do amazing things. That if faith the size of a mustard seed can uproot a mulberry tree, and I did a little bit of research on mulberry trees, some mulberry trees can actually be up to 70 feet high. Uproot this tree from the ground and tell it to plant itself in the sea. One commentator headlined his reflection on, where's that tree going? <laughs> Imagine the disciples like literally did that. And the people would see all these mulberry trees kind of trotting down the path and jumping in the sea. Faith. Faith can do that. Faith is not a question of, you know, quantity, but instead it's a presence and a little faith goes a long way. The power of faith. Our thoughts, our prayers have and are certainly with our sisters and brothers in the Maritimes who experienced this past week the full force and effects and the power of nature literally uprooting trees, causing so much damage and very sad to say taking lives. So the power of all that, do we see faith as that powerful? If faith the size of a mustard seed could uproot a mulberry tree, what can faith do exponentially when combined with obedience and humility? 
And that's the, the intention of the latter half of today's gospel, when Jesus is talking about this servant who only does what he is asked to do. On first read, it might seem like, like Luke took a whole bunch of ideas and what are we going to do with these ideas? Let's, all, let's stick them all in chapter 17 there and just dump them in there and carry on. They're there for a reason. It all, it all hangs together. That's another lesson that now Cardinal Collins, but at the time Father Thomas Collins, uh, taught me in scripture uh, studies at St. Peter's Seminary in London, London, Ontario. It all hangs together. It's all important. Don't skip over things. Study it, pray through it, consider it, and allow the Lord to enlighten us. So faith combined with obedience and humility that is doing what we've been asked to do and nothing more, nothing else, nothing less, really expands the power of faith exponentially. Faith is the opposite of fear. Faith, F-A-I-T-H, finally admit I trust him. I don't want to live in fear, F-E-A-R. False evidence appears real or one of my favorite interpretations forget everything and run <laughs> let's get out of here no i want to live my life in faith and so today as i said at the beginning we have an incredible opportunity that the lord offers us the gift of his power and grace in the holy spirit will i today in response to this word open the doors of my heart just even a little bit more to the power and grace and movement of the Holy Spirit. And instead of a mulberry tree being uprooted and planted in the sea, Jesus wants to root and plant uh, the power of his cross in our hearts today. And he waits for us to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus, you just go ahead and do that. Lord Jesus, increase my faith. So let us pray. So Lord Jesus, we do thank you for the gift of this day. Every day, Lord, is a gift from you. We thank you, Jesus, that even in the midst of the turbulence, the ups, the downs, the sideways, the disappointments, the setbacks, relational difficulties, whatever is going on in our life today, Jesus, help us remember that you are there with us, in it and through it, Jesus. You have promised, Lord, that you would never abandon us. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord Jesus, we come before you today. You know the circumstances of our life. We continue, Lord, to pray for that one person watching or listening to this podcast who has their own particular singular difficulties, Lord, that you would, Lord Jesus, speak gently now to their heart and remind them of your love, of your mercy, of your providence, that you are carrying them, Lord, as you carry us through life. I pray, Lord, for anyone who is away from you, Lord, who may have just come across this podcast, listening to it, watching it, just by your providence, Lord. Pray for anyone who has been directed to this podcast, Lord. Anyone here for the first time, Lord, that these words that you have inspired, Lord, would permeate their heart. Give us, Lord Jesus. Give us the grace we need, Jesus, to say yes to you help us jesus help us to step out in faith and to surrender lord jesus help us to let go and to hold on to you we thank you lord for the gift of your love and your mercy and your providence lord that you would lord jesus speak into the areas of turbulence in our life again reminding us lord that they are not a sign that you have abandoned us, but they are a sign that you are working to strengthen us, Lord, because you're there again, Lord. You're in the turbulence with us. Thank you, uh, Jesus. We continue to pray, Lord Jesus, in thanksgiving.
for all the many good things that you are doing in our midst, Lord. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you, Jesus, and to bask in the gift of your love and your mercy. Mother Mary and St. Joseph and our own patron saints, please pray for us today. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Stay caffeinated. And remember, when we're powerless, that's when we're strong. And victory is indeed gained through surrender. Don't forget to like, share, comment. And send me your ongoing prayer requests. I will certainly pray for you. Please pray for me. And thank you for your ongoing temporal support, which allows me to continue this important ministry of reaching as many people as possible with the message of the salvation, grace, power, mercy, love of God. Amen. Alleluia. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.